Hello everybody, this is Michael Campbell with Glossica, and it's a great honor to sit down in person with Stuje Raj. Now, for those of you who do not know, Stuje Raj, it, he runs around the world doing business deals, and he's an expert on cross-cultural communication. And not only that, but he's also known for his skills, his multilingual skills. Uh, we're here at a, an event in Japan, and on his card here, you can see all of the languages that he speaks. Yeah, I, you you I, probably got a longer list than me. Well, I just left it with indigenous. Yeah. It's, it's an indigenous uh, event we're promoting today. Yeah, but, we haven't gone through the indigenous here. But you know, languages are kind of interesting in, 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 some, in some respect, that's kind of an interesting thing. But I think more importantly, language is a tool for communication. And so there's a lot more involved with communication. It's not just, oh, I'm gonna learn this language. Um, you're also learning how to be able to interact with that culture and the people there. So that's what, kind of what I want to lead into sure. uh, with this talk with you today. And um, so I find it interesting that um, in a lot of cultures, especially in Asia, Southeast Asia, indirect communication tends to be a very effective way to get your message across and not saying what you actually feel in your heart, but actually saying the opposite and actually get that, that meaning across so that the other party actually understands that, but without offending anybody. Uh, can you share more about your experiences? And, um, well, and, and just, just to add, you know, he, he works with a lot of multinational companies around the world, and so uh, I'm sure you have a lot of experiences with, um, with this sort of thing that happens. Yeah, well, you, you just used interesting words just now in communicating that because you said in uh, indirect communication okay. I would argue on the other side of that that sometimes communication isn't just speech isn't just language and so sometimes it's blaringly obvious communication it's just without words but the Westerner or it's the foreigner, wherever this person is from, because actually right now, say in Thailand, there's huge issues with Chinese investors coming to Thailand and they're going crazy pulling their hair out, not being able to communicate or read the communication, even though they're learning Thai quite efficiently. Mm. And so, but to a, in a Thai mind, that communication is blaringly clear and loud. And so, so what you're saying is what the Thai person is communicating to them is very clear, but the Chinese person is not picking not up it. on the extra linguistic cues. Yeah, so when okay. you said you said communication here, there was an insinuation that maybe it's it's language and it's verbal. not just the words. And, and okay. so my, my the the flip side of that is that if you want language, use Google Translate. <laughs> like seriously, like at a linguistic level. Enough to, to, to get a general meaning and if you're a native speaker in one of the languages you can kind of get what's going on. But the reality is in any business situation it goes way beyond that. Right. It doesn't mean though that the communication's not there. And I tend to think that sometimes you can, you can do really well with business meetings without speaking the other person's language as long as you're able to read the non-linguistic cues, like the body language. That's interesting you say that in... Um, I believe that that's true. Many of the most successful business people in Thailand, and many of them have taken on Thai citizenship, and one's a billionaire that I know of, their Thai language is not really there, but their understanding deeply of the culture and the systems there and how to work them. And if you don't have the language, then what should be put in place? They are maestros. Yeah. And so they do, and then you get other people that may have the linguistic ability, but that mind is not there. I, I call it the operating system. So the OS isn't actually installed for the mind, and they don't do nearly as well. So they, you know, there's even a thing that you don't necessarily have to have the language to be able to function and start communicating. I would say, though, there is a level, though, where the language kicks in and you can't fully be uh, integrated there without the language. Yes. Yeah. That's true. So uh, do you have any examples of uh, where you have uh, gone into perhaps assist a company yeah. with communicating perhaps between um, the management in the West 
mm -hmm. uh, with the management in in place in the in the country that you're working on, and, and I know it's probably several countries you work with, but maybe, yeah. or maybe between the management and the employees and the staff, and what kind of situations have you seen arise? No, I, I can tell you, like right now, one of my clients in aerospace, and many people in this industry and in, in similar industries come into Southeast Asia and they say, oh, it's so frustrating. I tell people I want an open door policy and they just don't speak. And, or, you know, I just, you've got anything, you can communicate with me. And read it, it's like that cartoon with the frog, nobody speaks. Um, however, I can tell you as we're sitting here, we've been solution. doing this. No, well, not really. My phone is buzzing. Uh, I can feel it here. It's buzzing with locals on the ground in an aerospace factory shooting messages communicating their hearts out to me and spilling everything. Um, now, So you're the guy that they're willing to share everything with? Well, I, I've got a deal that basically a CEO, if they get me into a company at a regional level, whether it's in Indonesia, Thailand, whatever country, I go in. I'm a third party. Anything that their team members tell me is confidential. I don't have to tell the CEO anything. My job is to sit, to listen, and to find out what issues their teams are facing, the business is facing, how it might affect their business goals, because I would have spoken to the leadership, and then find a solution without getting anybody individually in trouble. Right. And so not sticking names to it. And so with this one client, I've been doing it for such a long time, I've just set a QR code up now, and they know that any message, when they scan this QR code and send an anonymous message, I can't even track the IP. I in intentionally did that. Comes to me. It comes to. There's another one just coming. How do you now. convince them though of, of I build that, that trust? Okay. Now over, over the years, they they know that I haven't burnt them yet. Okay. And this is into four years working with this one client. I haven't burnt them yet, and so they okay. know they can communicate with me, and they do. Like every just today, I've probably had about twenty messages shooting in off of the ground okay. um, from these guys. Now, we've had many incidents that have come in, Some are so, and many of them say, you know what, you can actually tell my manager or you can tell the CEO that I said this. I just don't want to have to say it myself. Mm -hmm. So, okay. And then there are other things that they really want to tell the CEO, but I think it's probably not their position. This is more of an HR issue and actually, it would, it's, it's not something that would put them in a good light with CEO, so I choose another way to address the issue that they're raising. It's not actually a CEO that needs to see it or, right. or would be the right person. Now, if you didn't have the language and the culture on that standing, you would just look at that from the outside through the, the view of, we do this in the West, Thais won't speak. I tell them, come and speak to me, they won't speak. They're very, they don't communicate. But they actually do communicate. It's just a way of doing it. An open door policy with the leader because of the hierarchy there, you just don't do it. Okay. Um, so that, that's, that's one area. Um, there are other areas where they might not say it directly because it's rude or because of respect, but they will send signals. Not saying something mm. tells you something's up. Mm -hmm. um, I always use the, we have a, um, a concept in Thai of green Thai. Uh, so green day is basic green 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 day. So if you think of, I, I put it like this: uh, if you are born, you've seen the the Indian gods with all the arms. So you're born onto this planet, and you're this clum. You've got your arms knocking everything over. Those those arms are the way you look, the way you sound, the way you smell. And so your gay your goal in life, green day. So that's your day. J is like xin zi pang in, in Chinese, this, this heart, heart radical, your mind, your heart, your mind. Heart um, radical for applied to everything else. Yeah, everything, okay. everything. Your existence on this planet, what Great effect time. that you have on the people around you. So kreng is you want to pull your existence in so you don't have any effect on anybody, positive or negative. Because just because you think it's positive, maybe to this person it's negative. Okay. So don't have an effect on them is better. And so you want to cling Thai. So this is an example. Som Thai, how's the um, report going for Friday? Krap. Now, krap literally means korap. May I receive what's being said? Now, Thais might translate this to yes, it's being done. Uh -huh. And so they'll say yes, but it doesn't mean yes. It means I have received what 
you were inquiring about and the fact that I'm not saying anything further than this means that you probably should look for a plan B. Now, the Westerner will interpret that yes or crap as yes or great. Okay, so Friday. But this they, use, they also use this there. in the middle of conversation as well, right? So you could translate as yes, or, I'm sorry, uh, um, right, or I hear what you're saying. Yeah, is but it, it doesn't mean that, it just means I hear what you're saying, but it doesn't mean I agree. It doesn't mean I agree, okay. And if they disagreed, you just wouldn't say it. Okay. Now, in the West, they say, no, they're, that's they're a leaving, load of crap. They're leaving this, this room of ambiguity there. Right, so you... They, they just only accept, they only give you the message that I've heard what you've said. Correct. That's the, and, and they might use the English word yes, because they're told crap means yes. Because that's a translation. Yeah. But they but, don't but understand that yes also means affirmative. Correct. Okay. And so what you said in the beginning, we'll go back to that. So you said communication. To, so listening to people speak, speaking English from other cultures, when they say yes to you, does not always mean affirmative. Because there's no such word as yes in Thai. It, as in many languages. Yeah. And yeah. So, so when you... Uh, if, if you, there's a video I've put out on that, but there's no such word as yes in Thai. Um, so coming back to what you said in the beginning, that communication um, or that, that is not as direct. The communication in the Thai's mind is totally direct because my silence is blaringly obvious communication right. that you need to save me here, boss. Mm. Um, because they're not saying any, any Thai manager, any Thai uh, paternal figure, um, would see that and then do what it needs to take to save the person that is under their, under their, in their network that they're taking care of. Is there anything else that you wanted to share with us today? Uh, this, I, if you're having issues doing business in across Asia, um, yeah, you probably want to take a step back and get in touch with you. Yeah, and you drop me a line. Oh, wh one last thing. Okay interpreters mm -hmm. and your communication if you are a Westerner working across Asia and your only node of communication for your organization or the people that you're doing deals with are either your secretary your HR director or even worse a hired translator that you get on the ground or even one that worse. the person supplies you you're gonna fail because you're always gonna get a skewed message and loyalty is not to you it's to who they have to live with the, the rest of their life Okay. And so if you think you're going to do business... Don't always trust the message that you're getting from your intent. No, they're not doing it badly. Yeah. It's not a bad intention but they towards are, but you. But they are filtering. But they're not loyal to you. Right, they're and filtering. They yeah, and they yeah. don't have the ethics maybe okay. that the Western ethics expect on translators. So their loyalty is not going to be to you. Just understand that. So don't think that oh, I'll just hire an interpreter when I hit the ground for this day or whatever. It's not going to work. You but the other edge of the up. sword with that is that you get... For example, Westerners trained in the language that might assist these people, uh, but may not have the experience like you've had. And go in; they don't, they don't completely understand all of the local, no, they don't. and they also mistranslate things back to their bosses. So you need to build up networks, and communication network. networks. If you're just relying on interpreters or your secretary, and your secretary might have a political view that is not going to go anywhere near these people, but actually these people are the people who are going to help your companies thrive. Okay. But because of their pol political mindset, they're not going to let you go near that. Uh -huh. And so you need to build a balanced thing. And again, it's something that takes time. You can't just go in there and bang, 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 bang. So you also need to know who that, ne who that network or who that person's network is and who they're plugged into as well, you know. But you wouldn't know. Kind of their back background. If somebody's yeah. just arrived, you wouldn't know. So you need to slow and do your homework. And, and get in there. But if you think you're gonna, and, and don't just have one node of communication, mm. build, build a network through. And that's what I do. I, I, I go in there and I'm the first instance, but then I'll start to build these communication nodes out then that at least let the foreigners, if they don't have the language and cultural ability, they're getting balanced sources of information, not just through their secretary or the HR director or the procurement department, which right. is actually, you know, they, they don't get into procurement departments. They're like the bane of a lot of crap that goes on in companies in Southeast Asia. But um, yeah, you want to build up multi, multi. What's the word? Point communication networks. Well, thank you, Stu J, for uh, sitting down and having this uh, quick interview with you and sharing some of you know all of the the massive experiences that you have stored up in there. 
and um, you have this really amazing framework on uh, doing base, uh, business in, in Asia. And if any of you are interested in expanding some of your business in Asia or learning more about the culture and everything, uh, be sure to check out uh, Stu J. You also have your own channel uh, on YouTube. Yeah, Stu J. So if you do Stu J Raj, you'll find it. It's Stu, I think, the underscore J. S T U. Yeah, and then J A Y. And then J Academy. So Academy, but take that first A, change it to a J. J Academy. So you've got J Academy. You also have a platform for learning Thai. That, that, that's J Academy. Well, all my okay. learning, e learning stuff's at J Academy. Right. My blog and things. So if you just you can read about all this stuff, is at um, StuJ.com. And just a, just a real quick plug here. You've also been a, a long-term fan of uh, Glossika as I well. I love Glossika <laughs> from the very beginning days. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for having you on today. Thanks, Mike.